And it's 2 o'clock. Harding, Jerem, Melton, Pauls, Palermo, Festerson, Mr. President. Here. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our remarks today by Council Member uh, P. Festerson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So although the weather today is not as nice as we might like, this time of year is a very special time in our city uh, where big things are happening. Uh, this weekend, of course, is Cinco de Mayo in South Omaha. Uh, we also have about 42,000 people coming to Omaha this weekend for the Berkshire Hathaway meeting, a great opportunity for uh, our city to shine and a huge economic impact, of course. And then also the state track meet is about to happen and come to Omaha also a huge uh, event for our city with a lot of economic impact. Two uh, items that I think uh, will uh, transition well to our report today. We're going to get from the Commission and Visitors Bureau before we start. Uh, but I just remind everybody that it's our chance to be good ambassadors for our city too. I think we always are, but especially this weekend and over the next few days, that's really important um, as to how we represent our city and, and take that opportunity. And then lastly, before we start, I did want to wish a happy birthday to our city clerk, Eliza Butler. <laughs> she, she said her birthday wish today was a short council meeting, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to deliver that to her. <laughs> and then secondly, I think she shares that birthday with Jimmy Melton, and also my dog, Charlie Festerson. <laughs> An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Omaha City Council. The council thanks you all for being here today. As a courtesy to those in attendance, we would ask you to turn off or mute any of your electronic devices. And as I understand, we're going to get a, uh, a briefing from the uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau first? Correct. Okay. We shall call you up, Mr. Bexson. <laughs> set? All right. Well, good afternoon, Council President Gray and members of the City Council. Thank you for this opportunity to give you a brief presentation this morning. The Visit Omaha team has prepared a quick presentation that will kind of highlight what we've done in 2018. In front of you, you have a copy of our, our annual report and then also with our business plan for, 20, for 2019. These are hot off the press. We just got them yesterday. They're in full detail if you want to look at what our shared goals are that we have for each of the things, each of the marketing campaigns we do. It's in great detail. This morning's presentation is going to, or this afternoon, I guess, is going to be quick. Um, I promised Eliza that I would do it as quick as possible. But we have a lot of great things happening in Omaha, and we want to at least get a chance to share a few with you today, tell you a little bit about 18 and where we're going in 19. Just a reminder, our, our mission is very simple. It's to, to promote and develop the Omaha metropolitan area as a dynamic tourism destination in order to stimulate economic growth. In 2018, I'm very proud of our meeting sales and sports team. You know, they're focusing on bringing large conventions to a uh, single hotel, but also to the CHI Health Center and throughout the county. Um, we had 140 groups that chose Omaha for their future conferences in 2018. So a great job on our team. Those 140 events, range from something that would have happened in 2018 all the way out to 2023, and some of the leads that we generate take us out to 2028. So when we're looking at our, where we're pursuing business, it's much further in the future than what we're dealing with right here in, in today's agendas. Um, those 140 groups, they represent $286 million in economic impact when they come to the city. So back to the point that meetings do mean business and bring a lot of jobs and economic impact to the city. Uh, also, on the other side of it is our leisure campaign. So we, we pursue group business, but then also at the same time, we're trying to go after that leisure traveler. That's that couple in Kansas City that uh, has, a, has to decide, we got a weekend to get away. Do we want to go to Oklahoma City? Do we want to go to Des Moines? Or how do we convince them to come to Omaha? So we call it our leisure area. 
Our marketing team does a variety of different programs throughout the year, promoting Omaha as a place to come visit. And uh, we focused on seven specific cities. You kind of take that circle of a six hour drive and say these are the folks that we're marketing to that can go after things. Um, last year we focused on those seven cities and out of those seven cities we saw a 13% increase in our leisure travelers. So uh, we know that those, were, those um, opportunities are working well for us. Now once we get them to come here, they got to have a great experience. And uh, our visitor center, as you know, we have the one on the corner of 10th and Farnham. We also uh, work with the Kiwanis Club and their Golden Ks, and we manage two uh, visitor centers out at Epley Airfield you know, in conjunction. Uh, we talked a while ago about do centers, are visitor centers going away because everybody has a smartphone. They go on the web, they do all their own research, and what we've actually found is, yes, they do all those things, but they still want to talk to a local when they get here. And we had over 42,588 visitors come through our visitor center doors last year asking exactly those kinds of questions. Hey, I'm here to go to the zoo, but what's the best pizza joint in town that I should take my family to? Or um, what, is that, what is your favorite craft brew place to go? And that's what our visitor center folks do, is they give them that local perspective on things. And we wouldn't be able to do that without the 72 volunteers that help us out every day. Um, looking ahead to 2019, uh, starting first with our meeting sales side, Again, they're focusing on bringing those convention groups to the city. Um, we're really enhancing our Chicago em emphasis. A couple years ago, we put an emphasis on Washington, D.C. by putting an office in place, having a person from here that flew to D.C. to pursue business on a monthly basis. It was very successful. And we went there because it was the largest grouping of associations in D.C. Well, guess what? The second largest grouping of associations is in Chicago. So we're replicating that program and have a person on our team that flies up to uh, Chicago each month works out of our office that we have up there and continues to build the relationships with those meeting planners in that marketplace. Um, we're also continuing and very proud of the relationship we've built with the Omaha Sports Commission. Josh Todd is their executive director. He's new to, to the Omaha in the last year. He's doing a great job, but our two teams are recognizing how much sports make a difference in our tour and travel area. When people come to this marketplace, whether it be for an NCAA event or whether it's a soccer tournament, those overnight rooms mean a lot to us. And so we're joining together, focusing on which activities can we pursue for Omaha in the future. Uh, and um, having facilities such as the Union Bank and Trust Complex, which is relatively new out towards Elkhorn, has been a great addition for us to go after some new basketball tournaments and volleyball tournaments that help generate overnight rooms. On the leisure side, our marketing team, uh, we're launching 15 new videos this year, and I'm going to share a couple of those with you here in just a moment. But again, our focus is on that Minneapolis, Kansas City, and Des Moines, and Sioux Falls, and St. Louis marketplace. The other area that I like to talk a little bit about is uh, the, the business traveler. You know, we've always talked on our team about we do primarily focus on group business, and we primarily focus on that leisure side because that business guy, he's coming to town no matter what. He's got business he needs to do here. Trends are starting to show that that business traveler is a millennial. Millennials like to travel. They enjoy grabbing friends and bringing them in or meeting friends in places. And so we're, we're kind of blending that leisure and business and calling it leisure and putting an emphasis on how do we make sure that that business traveler that's coming to town sees enough, peak, that we pique his interest enough about the destination that maybe he wants to bring someone else with him or maybe he wants to stay an extra day and explore. So we're doing that. And then, as part of our mission is to, to help drive um, product development in our community. And so I'll just sort of tease you with maybe something we're going to announce later on this year that has to do with the Bob Carey Bridge. And every bridge needs to have something that lives underneath of it. So that little blue guy might be something you're going to learn more about at a later date. Deb Ward, our VP of Marketing, has sworn me to secrecy. So that's all I can say at this point. Um, since most of our advertising is done outside the marketplace, you know, you never get to see our commercials. And so I'm going to show you just a couple of quick ones here. But our background behind them is that we do them in 30, 30 second increments, two 15 second spots that we can use whether it is in traditional media and advertisement down in Kansas City or something we do on our social media. But by doing them in these small little increments, um, it allows us to also target them to specific audiences. So this first one is for a family. And this is the call to action part. weekends every year. They're not just days on a calendar. They're an anthem to life. They're road trips that turn into stories that get better with time. 52 chances to make extraordinary memories. Not just the ones you post, the ones you share with the next generation. 
52 weekends waiting for you. Plan yours at visitomaha.com. And then we compare that with something to do in town. Make sure I get this to the right spot. In this case, highlight the zoo. Again, we're targeting families. The world's best zoo. According to anyone who knows everything about anything, plan your Omaha adventure at visitomaha.com. Then we can mix it up and we can go after that couple and we'll, we use a convention. This would be the call to action. How much vacation time have you left on the table? There are 52 weekends every year. 52 chances to extend that weekend getaway. You've earned it. Adding days to your weekend will add years of memories to your life. 52 weekends waiting for you. Plan yours at visitomaha.com. And so we're targeting the adults. Now we now we paired this with something else. And I, I had a my team had to explain this to me. I've been off the market for about 33 years, so I didn't quite understand some of the new ways of dating. So uh, let's go to um, how you can choose your beer partner. Omaha. It's like Tinder for craft beer lovers. Plan your Omaha weekend at visitomaha.com. So again, you see all of these ads. You won't see them here in Omaha. You can go on our website and see them, but these are targeted to go in that 650 mile radius of Omaha, trying to attract those people to choose Omaha over something. We can use it through our social media by targeting different demographics at a time and different activities. So that's a little update there. Um, so another new initiative in 19 is our, we were able to, thanks to a grant from the Douglas County Visitor Improvement Fund, we were able to reskin, as I refer to it, our two visitor information booths out at the airport. Um, in addition, we were able to partner with Sarpy County and Pottawatomie County. Um, in conversations with our staff out there and conversations with the airport, it's a regional airport. Um, there are people that, that, that drive all the way down from Sioux Falls to, to fly out. We have people that fly in here to get out to uh, western Nebraska, over into um, over in Iowa, and we realized that we needed to be more of a Metropolitan Visitors Bureau, so it's the Omaha Metropolitan Visitor Information Booth. And we partner with Sarpy and Pottawatomie on that, and uh, it, we've had a lot of activity at with it, which is very good for us. Um, lastly, um, before I open it up to questions, you know, each of you know your districts better than we do. We like to think we know your district, but we really could use your help. Uh, we have a, we've put a special landing page for each of you so that you can see how tourism impacts your district specifically. So if you go to our website, you can click on to your exact page, and in there is a listing of all of the businesses that we work with that are tourism related. Um, and you can see how they can impact you. And if you see somebody that's not, that should be on there, let us know so that we can work, reach out to them about it. Um, also, throughout the year, periodically, I send you guys each little emails uh, or, or an update letting you know if somebody in your district has been recognized. Uh, we do a TV spot every Friday on our local restaurant scene, and so I've been sending if your restaurant, if a restaurant in your district has been has been uh, featured on KETV, we make sure to let you know about it. So it's something else you can share with your district members. One other plug, I won't be here on next Tuesday. I'll be in Washington, D.C. for another event, but it is National Tourism Week. And during next week, we will also be hosting our OMA Tourism Awards. And I think, uh, Councilman Gray, you will be one of our people presenting. That is our annual opportunity to celebrate the frontline employees that every day are out there helping make sure that a visitor to our community has a positive experience. So thank you for that and, and your support. I also want to recognize the, my staff that's here today, because the work that you see done, it's done by 24 amazing people that uh, are behind the scenes every day, along with our 72 volunteers who are constantly out thinking about how we can promote Omaha and market ourselves to that visitor and make sure that we drive economic growth. So I want to thank that team. But also, I want to thank you, council members, for all your support throughout the year, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, Brent, Mr. Hardy. Thank you, President Gray. Just wanted to uh, echo Keith's last uh, kind of statement there. I think the the, the staff um, that you have is 
does an incredible job of promoting Omaha. And like you said, we don't see a lot of what you do out there, but uh, I think this is helpful to have, and, and your staff is, I, I'm just amazed by it, and, and they all deserve um, all the accolades that they can get. Thanks. Yes. Thank you very much. Is that all? You finished? <laughs> I thought you had more. You trying to, yeah, we're trying to get. We're trying to get a lot. <laughs> the first of all, let me just let me just say, Keith, I don't, I don't have a question for you, but I do have a comment. I, you know, I've done considerable traveling over the last couple of years, and it's really interesting to be in a city uh, like Kansas City uh, or St. Louis and watch Omaha pop up, pop up on the television screen. <laughs> so you're doing a really great job, and and. Uh, I just want to echo what, 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 what Mr. Harding said. This, this, what you guys are doing is, is amazing and fantastic, and I don't, I don't know that there are any other adjectives that I could use that would be better than the ones that I've already used. You guys do a really great job, and I just want to thank you for the effort. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Items 6 to 13 can be considered together for 33 Mason North Replat 1, located northwest of 33rd and Mason Streets, and 33 Mason South Replat 1, located southwest of 33rd and Mason Streets. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval, B is communication and opposition, and this is approvals for ordinances to approve a major amendment to a PUR overlay district and to approve the development plans for these locations. Resolutions to approve the preliminary plats with a waiver of section 53-84A lot depth for 33 Mason North Replat 1, resolutions to approve the final plats, and resolutions to approve the subdivision agreements. Public hearing on agenda items numbers 6 through 13 are today. Proponents, please. Stephen Held, uh, 3502 Leavenworth Street, uh, representing the applicant Uptown Properties, LLC. I can answer any questions you guys have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? To give those to the clerk, please, and she'll, she'll pass them out. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Melissa Carlberg, and my husband, Zach, and I are homeowners of 1003 Turner Boulevard, which is directly behind the property that Uptown is developing at 33rd and Mason Streets. While I have no objections to the replatting of the projects, I do have concerns with the up upkeep of the construction site and the communication and cooperation that has been lacking between the developers and the neighbors surrounding the property. I have been in contact with the developer and my council person, Chris Jerram, but wanted the council to be aware of these issues as part of this public hearing. My husband and I have been supportive of this project from the beginning, and during a meeting with the neighborhood about three and a half years ago, we advocated for the developers, gave them our contact information, and asked for them to keep us informed. When we received notice from the city about vacation of the alley behind our house, we reached out to Chris Jerram for additional information. He contacted Uptown and Stephen Held set up a meeting at our home to go over the project plans. We were fine with the alley vacation, but wanted com confirmation that the retaining wall that was sagging behind our garage would be removed as it was damaged after the vacant houses were demolished on the property to be developed, and it has been removed. We left this meeting feeling satisfied that Uptown would be a good neighbor. Unfortunately, I've had several issues with the upkeep of the property since then and have not been impressed with the response I've received from Uptown. I also feel that the neighborhood should have been informed about the change in project plans by the developer rather than by public hearing notice we received in the mail for today's meeting. I've compiled some photos of the property over the course of the last year to share with you today. Aside from the ones I took this week, they've all been shared with Uptown previously, and I'd like to walk you through them. The ones labeled June 2018 shows two individuals who were looting the property. I called the police and one was arrested. This is a frequent occurrence throughout the past year. First, it was people going through the construction site looking for scraps. Now we have people scavenging the dumpster on a regular basis, prowlers around the job site, and even people stopping by to use the porta potty. I feel that for this reason, a fence should be installed on the property and possibly a contracted security patrol. I do not feel safe walking from my garage to my house with my children while looters are rifling through the dumpster. My concern also extends to people walking to and from the park as well as from the school bus stop on the corner. The photos at the bottom of June 2018 show the weeds that were growing on the site at that time. When I notified Uptown, I was told they'd be taken care of. However, looking at the next page, you'll see that after more than a month went by, there was no resolution. 
I contacted Uptown once again and received a rude response. These weeds were more than six feet tall before someone came out and cut them down. In February, I contacted Uptown about the state of the dumpster, which you see in the photos. Couches, mattresses, and other large items were there for more than a month. When I contacted Uptown, they told me they were no longer involved in this project and directed me to Legacy Homes. Legacy Homes informed me that Uptown was still responsible for the dumpsters. Since Uptown had told me they were no longer responsible for the site when I brought this issue to them, I was surprised to learn that they were still involved in the project and are now requesting a replat and development plan approval. I asked Uptown at that time about the future of the project. I was told they believed Legacy Homes was continuing with the original plans and alley easement. Not only were we not kept informed of the project plans, I was misled. I appreciate Chris Jerem and Stephen Scarpello for following up on the dumpster issues in March. The decaying couches and mattresses were removed. However, in the photos marked April 2019, you can see it is still an issue. There's another mattress discarded next to the dumpster, and there's significant trash on the construction site. It's only a matter of time before weeds take over again. In summary, I'm dissatisfied with the way Uptown has managed the project. There's been little to no communication with neighbors, and we are not notified of the change in construction plans. Some outreach or meeting should have been held with neighbors prior to the public hearing on this subject. Before the City Council approves the development plan and replat, there should be clarification on who is responsible for the project moving forward. All of the paperwork that accompanies today's request indicates that it is Uptown. However, I noticed on current property listings that Legacy Homes is trying to sell the units on 31st Street that previously were part of Uptown's development. The question remains, who is responsible for this project? Finally, I'm frustrated with the condition of the property. Regardless of whether the City Council approves the amended development plan and replat, it needs to set the expectation that these issues will be resolved, meaning the property is reasonably secured and adequately maintained moving forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing on public hearing is closed. Mr. Jarrell. Stephen. Well, we've heard um, the biggest question is, who's in charge of this project, Legacy or you? I think some of that falls within the context of... Who, who's in charge of the project, Legacy or Uptown? I guess it, in the context of it being treated, there's some confusion with whether this project is treated as multifamily or single family. If you think about, uh, it, this is an actual subdivision. Legacy does own some of the lots. Um, the original arrangement was that we would own lots, they would build on them, be at risk. Um, we've since kind of restructured that in some way for some of the lots that they're building on. Um, in a typical subdivision, you would have a developer who would go through an SNID project um, and various builders would build homes on it. Uh, we're still kind of, you know, I started this process back in 2013. Um, I've been here and I continue to be here. I live in the neighborhood. Uh, I think when one of the very first times I went in front of planning board, I got denied for this sort of development. Uh, I think one of the, I think I was right before um, some major project that was going in Fair Acres and like 500 people showed up to this Steven, room. Steven, I, I don't want. I know, I'm just and, trying to get some context to the situation. I, wanted, I think she has I wanted, every, I wanted a direct answer right. to the question so that people I'm responsible who, okay and I that's what I was getting to I'm responsible I'm not going to not take responsibility uh, Uptown has and continues to want to pursue this type of development it's a process I don't think that we have a complete um, understandable process of how it looks uh, because of kind of the it kind of falls within a hybrid of multifamily and uh, and normal subdivision development right. Why didn't you go back to the neighbors in the neighborhood meeting like you held before you came and proposed this project in the first place to allow the neighborhoods the opportunity to know what was going on, to learn about the project, to have their questions answered, and then um, basically give them the courtesy of knowing their new neighbor cares as much about them as neighbors as they do each other, I especially didn't. the ones who were supportive of you in the earliest days of the project. I, I you realize didn't. how um, disrespectful that is to skip that process? Yeah. I, I didn't, and I should have, and it was disrespectful. 
and I apologize to Melissa. Um, I guess the point I was trying to make was when we started in this neighborhood a couple years ago, I think it continues to be one of the lowest owner-occupied neighborhoods in Omaha. And make no mistake, but this council, the city, the neighborhood is appreciative of the investment that you're making. They're not appreciative of the cavalier approach that's happened during the construction phase right. and in this um, rezoning request. So given all things that have happened and the messes that we've driven by in different weeks, your project is a sense of great pride for me in neighborhood revitalization so much so when I take people out to lunch, I ask them if they have some time to go for a little tour afterwards for some updates on what's going on. Thanks. There were many weeks when there was nothing going on. Right. When I was getting questions, yeah. you weren't answering calls. They were being redirected to Legacy, who it was literally getting the fingers crossed, right. uh, pointing at each other. So going forward, I want your commitment that the site will be kept clean, that you will secure the site, and I'm going to give you a couple weeks, well, we're going to lay this over probably, sure. a few weeks to make sure that you have time to get those things done, Sure. and we're going to bring you back and take a look at what's happened, and also to make sure that you have an opportunity to meet with and make amends with the people who you've disrespected, sure. because this is not the way to go about doing business. Yeah. Even though Absolutely. your project is laudable, the results are to be applauded, the in-between phases on some right. of these sites are a mess yeah. and they need to be addressed. So I move to lay over three, three meetings. Uh, moved and seconded to lay over items six through 13 for three weeks. Uh, there's no more lights, roll call. Harding. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Yes. Paul? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Items 14 and 15 relate to the same project and can be considered together for Antler View, located southeast of 192nd Street and West Maple Road. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Items 14 and 15 are ordinances to approve major amendments to the Antler View Mixed Use <coughs> District Development Agreement. Public hearing agenda items numbers 14 and 15 are today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Moved and seconded to approve items 14 and 15. There are no lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. 14 and 15 are approved. 7 to 0. Items 16 to 18 relate to the same project and can be considered together for Woodbrook West, located northwest of 180th and 4th Streets. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approvals. Item 16, an ordinance to rezone this property from AG District to R4 District, high density. Item 17, a resolution to approve the final plat for Woodbrook West. Item 18, a resolution to approve the Woodbrook West subdivision agreement. Public hearing agenda items number 16 through 18 are today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the Council. My name is Mark Johnson. My address is 11440 West Center Road. I'm appearing today on behalf of the applicant, Celebrity Homes. With me today is John Coolidge from Lamp Renierson. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Moved and seconded to approve items 16 through 18. There are no lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Palermo, yes. Festerson, yes. Mr. President, yes. 16 through 18 are approved, 7 to 0. Items 19 to 21 relate to the same project and can be considered together for Waterford Crossing Replat 27, located northeast of 156 and Ida Streets. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. These communication and, oppos uh, and opposition received today. Item 19, an ordinance to approve a major amendment to the Waterford Crossing Replat 27 Mixed Use District Development Agreement. Item 20, a resolution to approve the final plat for Waterford Crossing Replat 27. Item 21, a resolution to approve the Waterford Crossing Replat 27 Subdivision Agreement.
Public hearing on agenda items numbers 19 through 21 of today. Proponents, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Council members Brent Beller, 1140 West Center Road. Appearing on behalf of the project applicant Dragon Storage LLC. With me today is Brian Ritter, the developer, uh, along with Randy Kushak, uh, engineer with Lampert Nearson. Uh, before you today, you may recall from our preliminary submittal, um, this is a replat in addition an amendment to the mixed use development agreement uh, amending the exhibit that was a part of that original agreement just to get our bearings here's 100 here's ida street going uh, west and east and then 156 going north and south you may remember we're replatting into four separate lots here our largest lot this lot one will be a storage unit facility uh, and then lots two three and four will be spec commercial retail office type uses um, Preliminary plat is uh, similar to the preliminary plat that you all approved. And so with that, we're here for any questions or comments. We appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Well, Council Mark Bondrasik, 211 South 37th Street. Um, I just want to talk very generally about uh, these storage facilities that are going up all over town and the responsibility that we have to wisely use the land that these facilities are going onto. I was at the meeting, I was in the hallway this morning at the pre-council meeting. I heard Councilman Melton uh, discuss the, how these uh, facilities would be viewed, how they look in the neighborhood. They're going to be across the street from a high school. Um, I really think that there should be more restrictive uh, green space requirements for these uh, facilities. I know that on a lot of them, the borders around them are given, you know, there's grass space and some trees put in, but all in all, the facilities themselves are concrete uh, slabs with a bunch of row house buildings on them. Um, I also think that uh, something to look into, a lot of other cities have requirements for roof spaces to be green. Uh, or to have solar panels put onto them. And all of these storage facilities have unused roof space, uh, and that translates into unused land space, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And I would encourage you to look for more creative uses uh, and to require more creative uses for these people putting storage units up all over the city. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Ms. Melton. Thank you. Um, we can, if Dragon Storage could come back up, and I don't know if you want to come back up. So I, as opposed to the first time where nobody knew it was happening and they didn't catch it, um, I have received some, at least one complaint. I've got two complaints that I've, I've received on this. And this comes back to a little bit of the general, I'm not, I'm not looking to require solar panels on roofs, but it, it's the fact of what, what are we going to look for, where are we going to put storage units? And I guess my concern here is I don't know what they look like. I don't. I don't have a good feeling or picture of what this is. I, and I can tell you, I do have concerns with these storage units going up all over Omaha in areas such as the 72nd and Maple. Um, we had some out in Elkhorn. We, and we just were putting these. And right here, we don't have a whole lot of development. But is this, the devel is this what I want to start the development with, is put the storage units there first? Because I do think it could end up devaluing the land around it and could hurt further development. What I would like to do is lay this over, um, at least for two weeks, just to, because I would like to have the opportunity to meet with you, at least meet with one of the, the surrounding neighbors um, that has a complaint, and maybe you could present what it's going to look like, maybe things that we could do to hide it, so to speak, because that's what I'm always looking for when it comes to storage units. How are we going to not know that they're there? Sure. Um, and so would would you agree to a two-week layover on this so that we can be presented with more information and potentially have that meeting? Uh, Brent Beller, 1140 Western Road, just responding. So number one, we're under a time crunch. So we have a hard day because this our contract will go out of term if we don't close on this, and part of our conditions is getting this approval. But backing up, we have had, uh, I think it's three neighborhood meetings. We have had um, Mike and Brian have met with neighbors individually to go over this concept. Part of the reason why I think some folks are not here is those guys did a really good job of outreach to let folks know this is what's going on. I think part of what we discussed the last go around was we get it, that storage units aren't always the best use, but in this particular case, you have a, you know, a 10 acre mixed use development site that has sat vacant for 15 plus years. Um, part of our analysis is 
a developer has looked at this site for commercial uses, and those uses, for whatever reason, the market is saying that they're not viable. So here you have a use that's injecting, you know, six million dollars worth of improvements day one. It, it's storage facilities, I get it, but that's property tax basis. That goes to the, the SID that's there. In addition, all the public improvements, so North 154th Avenue, all the sewer stubs, uh, sanitary storm, all the lighting, all the landscaping, all that's getting paid for by this by this project. No, and, and listen, I'm completely supportive of the development and development in that area, especially with the new high school going in. Sure. I mean, this is exactly what we want. I, what I'm saying is, I have a hard time approving something where we don't even we don't even know what it's going to look like. I think that I mean I think everybody. I don't want to speak for everybody on the council, but I would like to think that we'd at least like to see what it's going to look like. So and we have renderings of, of another site. One of the things to keep in mind is there is a mixed use development agreement here. So there are a number of design guidelines that are in that mixed use development agreement that every single one of our buildings has to comply with. So we're talking that stone facade that has to go up. Um, you know, roofs, all the character, landscaping, everything that's in the mixed use development agreement today, which we're not asking any amendments for, that's what we'll comply with. And that would go for any building that's going to be placed on this site. So, you know, one of, the, one of the things I can't show is, you know, here is a picture from, well, let me find it. Well, I thought I had one. Here we go. So this is these are renderings of you know, what the inside of these buildings would be. What I want to show you is what the outsides, what the general public will see from the outside with the stone facade going halfway up, you know, paneling, rooftop, which again will all be in compliance with what the mixed use development agreement lays out. And sorry, we, I didn't think we'd get into this level of detail. So here we go. This one. So there's the, I mean, this color, that color is, that'll be guided by the mixed use development agreement. We're not saying there's going to be a yellow facade. Thank you. I think it's earth tones is what the mixed use <laughs> development agreement says. But this sort of stone facade, this style of roof, this style of siding, which is all in the mixed use development agreement, this is what you'll see out there. The other thing that, that the Dragon Storage has done above and beyond is the amount of landscaping. So there's certain requirements of how much treescape we have to have. They're going above that, so that most of this, as you drive down North 154th Avenue, it's all going to be screened in by trees. At first, are they going to be young trees? Yeah, of course. But over the course of 10, 15 years, they will be screened in eventually. So you're not staring at a bunch of units. And then the other thing to keep in mind is, remember the last time we talked, where the units will be is down gradient to where the general public will look at this. So for the most part, you either look over the roofs of this or you may see the landscaping and the trees that border the public uh, right away. So, I mean, and, I mean, these are things that I would have liked to discuss before today of the kind of landscaping that would go around it so that we could have some reassurances that that's actually going to go in. Saying that we're going to plant young trees so 15 years from now it won't be seen, I don't know, is necessarily the answer I wanted to hear. Maybe we could put some other landscaping around that would help cover it, I mean, I would have liked to see really what those would look like, maybe the presentation that you made to the neighbors, and you're telling me that two weeks is going to delay your project? We have a, it's it's literally conditioned upon this deal, and if and if we don't, if we're getting this approved, we don't close, I don't want to say, but they're out a significant amount of money, um, which is not, you know, that doesn't play into anything that you're making the decision, but there is a, there's a rationale as to why you know, in most instances, yeah, we could lay it over to show you what's going on. Um, but part of this is we, we've, you know, when we did the preliminary plat, we showed a lot of these exhibits. We showed what it was going to look like. Um, well, and but I think you knew from the preliminary plat that we wanted to see what it looked like. And so we do give a lot of latitude at the preliminary plat mm -hmm. because we understand it's it's the preliminary. What I, what I don't want to do is when we do give that latitude to the preliminary, what we do expect is okay, you're telling us all this stuff at the preliminary, so we're good, we'll pass it, but we're expecting then that you're going to have something a little more concrete to show us at the final plat. I mean, that that's kind of my expectation, that I don't want to hold up a project at the preliminary plat stage because you do still have many decisions that you're trying to make. But by the time you get to the final, 
there should be a little more for for us to look at. And I understand that right now what you're doing, it fits, you've got the zoning waivers, so you're able to do this. I'm a big believer that when it comes mm -hmm. to private property, people who have private property, it is not my job to dictate um, what you do with it. Uh, and I want to encourage development as well, especially in an area that has been vacant and doesn't have development. And I want to encourage further development around your development, which would help you, help us. It's a, I mean, it's a win-win. It's the storage units that I'm having some sure. trouble with. But if, if I could see just some kind of conceptual um, drawings of the retail that maybe is going to go around it, that would have been a little more helpful. What I don't want to do is cause your entire project to not move forward. Um, and I probably, I have a question for law because this came up a little earlier, or maybe, they might be planning, I guess. Dave, I bet you could answer it better. Under the zoning laws, what are we allowed to consider when it comes to storage units, the current zoning, and when it's being zoned mixed use? Is it, is there, could we even consider the storage units to deny this? Dave Fanslow, City Planning. I'm not sure I understand your question, but I'll try to step through the process. And okay. I think it was multiple questions. Yeah, I thought so. Long. So if I don't answer your questions, okay. then let me know. So the case before you today is a major amendment to the mixed use development agreement, the final plat. While why it has to go through the major amendment is because those storage units were not shown on the original mixed use development agreement, and so it is now a major amendment that goes through planning board and city council. If those units would have been shown on the original mixed use development agreement, then obviously they could just pull a building permit as long as they abided by uh, the mixed use development agreement at the time that they would have been approved. And do we have, currently, do we have any, you don't have to get a special use permit then for storage units? Not in mixed use zoning, no. It's, it's tied into the development agreement through the mixed use tool that we use. If it was zoned, uh, I'm shooting from the hip here. If it's zoned something else like CC, community commercial, special use permit, if it had base zoning, but since this is mixed use is the base zoning, but the mixed use process uh, development agreements allow for this use. So what uh, where we're sitting at today as a council is we have to either approve the entire development or say no to the entire development. We can't just say no to the storage units. Is that right? Well. I, I would say that that's why, why that why this case is here today is because they're asking for that major amendment in the final plat. Mm -hmm. So I, don't, I mean, I, I'll defer to Paul maybe, but I mean, the case before you is this. So I don't know if you can pick it apart. Uh, Paul Kratz, City Attorney. The problem is, it's uh, all these three items were kind of tied in together, so it'd be hard to pick one, not the other. And that that's kind of why I, I kind of knew the answer to that question, but that's. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you you answered on that. That's not what I want to do. I guess you're just putting you're putting us in a you're putting me in a difficult position where I want to approve the development, but I wish that we could have gotten maybe some additional commitments um, from you and from the developer as to what this is going to look like in the end. And, it, and so those commitments. <laughs> I mean, my understanding was that's when we work with city staff and, and getting everything in touch. So from our preliminary plat to our final plat, we work on a number of conditions that have to get approved. Each one of those conditions has been satisfied in order for us to even be a, before you today. And so I, maybe help us understand what else could we do other than what was already set aside in the conditions to be in front of you today. Well, t and typically what we will see is with some of these storage units is we will see a picture a better picture of what it's going to look like. And the city council has, has actually asked for additional commitments from developers putting storage units in, such as at 180th and Harrison, I believe. Councilman Paul's um, asked for additional commitments and additional. And that's their deal. Yeah, and I think. <laughs> and, and I think these, these photos that we're showing you today, that's, isn't that 180th and Harrison? So that, that's the same side. And so we, that's their product, other than colors which are all in the mixed use development agreement that we'll be subject to regardless. What I just showed you is what will be built. Okay. Those are the rents. And the landscaping around it so that the, that the people that are going to be on the other side are going to have some assurances yeah. 
um, that the proper landscaping would be put there, and they don't have to wait 15 years in order for the landscaping to grow. And, and so here's the site plan that was submitted with our final plat application. So you can see the extent of landscaping. And Randy, feel free to come up if you want to talk more about the type of trees and everything else that we'll be installing. I think that's, that's what important. I want to hear. Yeah. Okay. Randy Kushak, 14710 West Dodge Road, um, with Lamper Nearson. Um, so as part of the major amendment to the mixed use development agreement, one provision that was added to that compared to uh, the standard amendment is that for lot one, the landscaping shown in the submitted mixed use development agreement has to be done as that exhibit represents. So exhibit B in the packet is the landscaping that will have to be put in place. That would be three inch minimum caliper trees, and I believe it's three inch, two, two inch caliper day one. Um, we'll do a mix of evergreen and deciduous trees to get that screening and also natural grades help us bring those trees up versus the buildings, which will help that screening. But surrounding the entire site are buffer yards, which, which will have to meet the landscape buffer yard provisions in the code. Um, we have our reduced setbacks in a couple spots, but those spots will still have trees um, per at the density that you see in the mixed use development agreement. That is per the development agreement that was written in into the signed final agreement. So there is that assurance for lot one that the landscaping has to occur per that agreement. Okay, and then the, the, is it retail commercial that's going to be right there on the corner of 156th and Ida, is that right? Yeah. And so that, that will be a, bit, a significant buffer to the other development at, and the, the high school that's going to be built. Yes, so the, the development up in the front, that actually sits around 10 feet to 12 feet above all the storage units. So by the time, okay. when we're done grading out there and bringing that grade, the storage units will sit down below and the front retail will be all that you see as you, as you come up when that gets developed. Um, between the screening between the retail and the units, the elevation looking from the south coming down 156 or on Ida Street will be retail with everything else behind behind those buffer yards. Okay. All right. I, I guess I, I can't I, answer any more questions. I, this council, I think we, what we need to do is moving forward in the future is come up with maybe some different policies, because what I don't ever want to do is put somebody in a position where they're at the final plat and then I'm saying, well, I'm going to vote no. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to somebody who's investing quite a bit of money into into what, what will be added to our city at some point. I know it's outside the city limits, but still within the three mile radius and does it is helpful for the city of Omaha and growth going out there. So I think it may be maybe things that this council needs to do and I think we received some Assurance that the planning committee may be looking into this moving forward. So, okay. not going to make you suffer at this point. It's kind of a bigger issue yeah, all valid for our city. But it's just there's a process that's currently in place, and I, I I think there's probably some truth to what you're saying. So, no, thank you, and thank you for the, the extensive explanation. I appreciate it. Right, thank you, Mr. Festus. Thanks, Mr. President. And I'm not commenting necessarily on this project specifically, but to expound upon Council, Council Member Melton's comments a little bit as to storage in general. Um, as Chairman of the Planning Committee, and um, we are willing to take a look at this um, a little further going forward. There was a period of time where these facilities were really proliferating throughout the city, and we had you know five or six uh, come to us all at the same time, all with many of the same questions and things of the nature of how do they look and what are those standards and where can they go and we've had a few since then throughout the city but definitely in my district too um, that I wasn't comfortable with 72nd Maple um, which I voted against and there's one in Florence right now that we're not comfortable with either which might be more of a zoning issue but somehow developing more of a guideline or standard within city code and through our planning department as to how and where these get cited so we aren't used in valuable land necessarily next to a school or right next to a neighborhood like we had in Elkhorn recently. Uh, they had a lot of, op lot of opposition. <laughs> and how are we, um, you know, making that predictable for developers too in that, in that context so that you aren't coming to us and, and, um, and also receiving lots of opposition and questions to make that go more, more smoothly for you too. So um, these are all things I think we're willing to take up. In fact, Mr. Fanslaw indicated a willingness from the planning department this morning to start working on that. So um, I think um, my fellow committee members and I are willing to start taking a look at that uh, as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pauls. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. 
I assume you probably know this should be a little static because I gave you some static about this in the preliminary. That's right. Because I made an issue uh, high school. Now, just by where were the high speed located? So, uh, just to get our directions, so north, yeah. west, the high school will be over here. So there's a, there's a there's a ravine right here. There's a cubbies and a, a vacant lot right here. Right. C store, and then the high school, as I understand, will be across 156. Okay. So southwest corner. Uh, yeah, southwest corner. Okay. North northwest corner of 156 in Ida. Yeah. See, and see, my the rationale why I was giving a little bit of static on it is because it is so close to a multi-million dollar. Project the school is going to be what 70, 80, maybe 90 million, and I would think in that neighborhood you try to make things work a little bit more. I understand these will be somewhat hidden, um, but I, I would think that property property would have some value in the future, if not now, because of the potential of a high school. And I think there's going to be a Y there also in that same area. I don't know. Well, I, that, that's the part that amazes me. And in the same way on the 180th which, and uh, Harrison, which is in my district, and I know they did put some berms, things like there, but it's located almost right next door to a middle school. It seems like we're not thinking uh, the location and what's around it. That's it was one of my issues. But I truly believe that some of this information could have been shared, especially with uh, the council person who represents or will represent post, uh, possibly that district uh, should have been shown some of this stuff maybe in more detail. Well, and, and if anything, that's that's on us. I mean, normally we present everything in I, no, I preliminary get it, plat, and then final plat. If it's in conformance with the final plat, we don't go in the full blown presentation. I could have done that, um, but we already did that in preliminary. Well, I know, but it, it, I, and I understand that. But I'm just saying this is some of these that are very sensitive. You know that uh, this is going to be a sensitive issue, especially if we're talking about let's review how the why and the where of the uh, storage units. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I'm. This isn't also directed at you, so Mr. Okay. Beller, you can relax. Although, you know, it is nice to have you up there as the foil, so. To speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I do like the idea of the planning committee taking a broader look at storage. I mean, I look at this, did you say it's 10 and a half acres? I believe that's, it was, it, yeah, so, so, five, so it's a small mixed use development. 5.4 acres of just uh, rows of garages, you know, that to me, we need to be looking at that as a city, is that really what we want for our land use? I think we need to be looking at the design you know, criteria that we have as a city. Um, we've made some improvements in the more dense urban areas for storage unit design. But I, th but I think about just looking at this and I think in 10 years as that part of the city builds out People are going to be looking at us wondering what were we thinking. And I, I get the investment and the return that you're you're looking for because it's probably the biggest return to do a, a, a build <coughs> such as this rather than a vertical, um, no doubt. But there's so much room for improvement from urban design, land use, environmental, and I hope that's a part of the broader discussion that the committee has. Thank you. There are no more lights. Is there a motion? Because we haven't done that yet. Um, and I do appreciate the investment, and I, I think it would, it would be an awful statement for future developers if we were to approve the preliminary plat and then, and then say no, it's final. So I, I'm, I'm not willing to do that, but I do hope moving forward in the future, if you're, if you're gonna open additional storage units, that even that application, let, let's just know that this council moving forward in the future, I think is going to be very diligent on, on approving these and we're probably going to disapprove them if we can, if they're not falling into what 
Councilman Jerem just kind of talked about. Um, so I, I, I'm kind of reluctantly making a motion to approve, but but for those reasons. So. Moving seconded to approve items 19. 19 through 21. There are no further lights. Roll call. Harding, Jerem, no. Melton, Pauls, Palermo, Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Items 19 through 21 are approved. Five to two. Thank you. Item 22, an application to consider a Class IB liquor license for the sports hall located at 3852 Farnham Street, Suite 103. Public hearing agenda item number 22 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. Julia Plucker, 2804 South 87th Avenue. Here on behalf of the applicant, Sports Hall and Blackstone. Also with me is one of the owners, Joe Wrench, and we're happy to answer any questions you may have about the space. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Mr. Jarrett. Yes, if you want to come up, this you got one minute to tell us about your exciting new business. So, Sure. Uh, Richard Delta Wrench, uh, 2011 South 105th Street. Uh, we're actually going to be the first sports bar on the Blackstone, so we're in the central Blackstone, 38th Avenue, and uh, we're going to have Walla TV serving cold beers, Dante Pizza as well, and uh, <coughs> yeah, first sports bar. Kind of excited about it. Great, and plenty of parking. Plenty of parking, actually. We have two yeah. parking lots that we're learning of. One across the street on the, uh, will be the south side of 38th Avenue, which is empty all the time, but you guys can go there and park there <laughs> with the sports hall and Dante's, and then... Uh, Dante's parking lot will be half ours as well. All right. Good luck. We'll Thank you. Moved and seconded to approve item 22. There are no further lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 22 is approved 7 to 0. Item 23, an application to consider a change of location for Isla Del Mar Restaurant for their Class C liquor license to change from 3034 South 20th Street to 5101 South 36th Street. Public hearing agenda item number 23 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Come on, come on. Who's a proponent? You're a proponent? Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> um, well, my name is Ms. Mara Gonzalez. I'm the owner of Isla Del Bar Restaurant. And I'm here uh, to request permission to change a uh, liquor license for a new location. Uh, we started two years ago, and now we're moving to a bigger location. So that's why I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Mr. Palermo. And, and since it is Madam Clerk's birthday, Mr. Jaron gave 60 seconds. I'm going to give 30 if you can come back up. <laughs> um, so welcome. Uh, to the new area, obviously staying in District 4, so I appreciate that. Much bigger location, so business must be good. Tell me uh, what I'm going to order when I come there next. Um, the Seafood Tower. It's a, it's a form of a tower. Ceviche, cooked shrimp, and octopus. And it's this is the best that we have. I'm coming with so, him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Thank we're you. just very excited about it. Well, welcome. Wish you luck. Thank Move you. to approve. Second. Move to second to approve item 23. There are no further lights. Roll call. Harding. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 23 is approved 7 to 0. Consent agenda. Consent agenda. Any member of the city council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the city council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed, unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. Public hearing agenda items numbers 24 through 28 were held on April 23, 2018. I mean 2019. Moved and seconded to approve uh, 24 through 28. There are no lights. Roll call. Harding. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Items 24 through 28 are approved 7 to 0. The public hearing on agenda items numbers 29 through, 40, 29 through 49 are today. If you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent. 
Good afternoon, council members. My name is LaVanya Goodwin, and I am at 3116 North 24th Street, and I'm here to address item number 48 for the North Omaha Business Improvement District, and I am a proponent. So as I mentioned, uh, I am the co-owner of Goodwin Spencer Street uh, Barbershop, established in 1955 on North 24th Street by my father-in-law, Dan Goodwin Sr. I'm here today to present to you why it is critical at this point in time for the City Council to approve a business improvement district for the North 24th Street and support the work that is that lies ahead. North 24th Street is seeing a resurgence of economic development, entrepreneurial investment, and community engagement. It's with this momentum that the property owners of North 24th Street from coming to Ames believe that a business improvement district is a critical next step, the overall revitalization of one of Omaha's main arteries, which neighbors North Downtown. The historic business district of North 24th Street from coming to Ames has been in decline since the 1960s. While some pockets along North 24th Street have seen recent development, like the CHI Health Center on 24th and Coming, the Fairdale Village Marketplace on North 24th Street, and the sewer updates from 24th and Maple to Spencer Streets, the North 24th Street corridor is functioning far below its potential. Vacant lots, narrow sidewalks, and in some areas, non-existent sidewalks, along the, with dilapidated storefronts and excessive litter, continue to hinder the physical landscape and economic development of this once thriving historic business district. In October 2018, a group of business owners met to discuss the possibility of a business improvement district on North 24th Street. On February 25th, 2019, property owners within the proposed area met to learn more about the benefits of a BID. A nearly unanimous vote of over 70 property owners indicated support for the BID with the proposed boundaries of 24th and coming to 24th and Ames Streets. Soon afterward, initial board members were selected. The following companies represent the board. Logier Corporation, Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Nebraska, Assemblies of the Saints Church, the Salvation Army, Goodwin Spencer Street Barbershop, Hughes Foundation, the Carnation, the Carnation Ballroom, Mount Moriah Baptist Church, Omaha Small Business Network, the Cooler Snowballs, Omaha Economic Development Corporation, Habitat for Humanity, and the Omaha Municipal Land Bank. The North 24th Street Improvement District has both short and long-term goals. In the first year, beautifying the, beautifying the area through litter control will be a priority. Litter was a, determined to be a significant problem in the area during a recent block talk and SWOT analysis, and most streets needing street cleaning and a cleanup of the debris. The BID also looks to, faci to facilitate facade improvement and market the current attractions in the area. These initial short-term goals will provide needed solutions for the current businesses and property owners to improve their investments, while the Board of Directors develop long-term strategies for greater impact and economic significance. As a second-generation business owner of Goodwin Spencer Street Barbershop, one of the longest operating businesses on North 24th Street, I would like to ask the Omaha City Council not to only support our initial endeavor to, to approve a business improvement district on North 24th Street, but also to support future efforts of the business leaders of North 24th Street as we continue the work to revitalize this area. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a native North Omaha. I grew up. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, I, I can't do that. <laughs> now, my the name red is, lights on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Preston Love Jr. My address is 6021 Villa de Sante. My point is that I grew up in the 40s and 50s in North Omaha. When I grew up, 
My community was extremely poor, redlined, segregated, but we were rich in culture and history and people. And so we began to try to flex our cultural muscles and begin to do things, but in the 60s, we were devastated by civil disobedience and destruction of our own community, freeways that split our culture in half, and our momentum and our culture and our history was interrupted. So then as we began through the 70s and 80s and in a way the 90s, we lost our will, quite frankly to take our destiny into our own hands. And so my community kind of sat and to some degree never even repaired the devastation of the 60s and 70s. We had a leader here and a leader there, but the community in its aggregate did not have that momentum. Recently, uh, I've been encouraged by leadership and by the community's will to begin to take its destiny in its own hands. I compliment, quite frankly, our city councilmen and uh, many organizations such as OEBC, I see Mike Maroney sitting behind me, and others. And we have seen some measure of development uncoordinated in some degree, uh, coordinated in others. So here we are uh, proposing a 24th Street quarter development. I stand to support it because what I see, and the reason I wanted to give you that history, is a different tone in our community, a different will to not just have the growth of nonprofits, but a will to begin to grow for-profit corporations and to develop as in Benson and Blackstone and Dundee. We now have the will and we have the talent. And so this BID uh, comes at the right time. And so we'd ask not only for your support, but for your understanding for where we've come from. And so with that, I submit. I Thank you. I'll give you my name and address at the end. Yeah, give it no, to me. No, no. <laughs> Thank you so much for your space. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Luis Jimenez, 518 North 40th Street. Um, I'm also with a neighborhood association in that area, and it's called Parker Action Alliance. Our address is 2205 North 24th Street. I want to uh, touch on what Preston said that this is a good development. Congratulations to the community uh, for taking the initiative, the council members for supporting uh, this, uh, possibly supporting this. Um, my comment is that I see money as energy and that uh, North Omaha has been lacking energy and it permeates, that lack of energy permeate, permeate, permeates into many facets of that community. So this is an, an effort that will um, have consequences, effects that we don't even know yet. Um, so I encourage your, your support. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents who wish to be heard? Good afternoon, council members. My name is Ralph Kleinsmith. I work at Logier. I've been there for 22 years. I promise to keep this brief in honor of your birthday. So. As I stated, I've been there 22 years, but Logier has been a member of the community, a very strong member of the community, and a very active member of the community for the past 60 years. We've been very fortunate that we're in Omaha, Nebraska, because we have an outstanding workforce in this community. But I want to point out is there's a very special relationship to North Omaha and Northeast Omaha with Logier. Um, I work out of 6336 Pershing Drive. However, we have an operation on 4224 North 24th Street. So I have been fortunate to be part of this company and part of this community. The point I'm going to make is Logier is the number one store fixture manufacturer in the country. It was not by luck. It wasn't by half and chance. 
is because of hard work from the community, hard work from our owners, and especially from the workforce we attract from Northeast and North Omaha. So there's a very special relationship with the North and Northeast Omaha. We know from a business standpoint, one, it's the right thing to do to support the 24th Street corridor. Second point, I'll be honest with you, we're gonna be a little bit of selfishness, is we know we cannot exist to be number one, or continue to be number one, without a vibrant community. So I want to make sure the council members understand and know that Lozier supports 100% the revitalization of North Omaha, specifically 24th Street Corridor and the 24th Street BID, and I appreciate your attention and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Uh, Michael Moroni, uh, Omaha Economic Development Corporation President, 2221 North 24th Street. Uh, we own a number of the affected properties up and down 24th Street, but I just want to say that we are totally in support of this and understanding it will cost us, but we think in the long run the community will benefit, and that's what we're all about. I hope you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents who wish to be heard on this item? Seeing none, are there any opponents on any of the other items. <clears throat> Larry Store, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, Omaha 68132. Uh, amongst all the items, I'd like to probably oppose almost every one of them, but I'm going to specify uh, this current one and number 48. 33 and 48, is it? And the reason I'm doing so has to do with uh, the probable involvement of the Omaha Land Bank. I'm not opposed to uh, dressing up the neighborhoods. However, I have been on 24th Street quite a bit recently, and it doesn't look blighted to me anymore. There's been a lot of new development there. It looks real nice. I compliment you all on that. But when I do a little research <coughs> on the, this topic, I find out that, uh, and I see some signs in Omaha now. Omaha Land Bank. Well, I am not a member of Nebraska Taxpayers for Freedom. But they did have some issue papers about this. And assert in their issue paper. I'm sorry, Larry, which item are you on? Which item are you talking about addressing? North Omaha Development and number 48. North Omaha, but also number 33, I think. It doesn't say how many I can or can't. It just say if you want to wish. Right, but none of, neither one of them have anything to do right. with the land bank. Yes, the one lady jumped to number 48. But neither one. Do I have, have to go to, to only 48? But neither one of them have anything to do with the land bank. Uh, the one lady mentioned land bank, so that's an open topic. She brought it up. I didn't. No, the land bank is a the land bank is a member of the BID. Uh, okay. Uh, well, anyway, uh, Doug Kagan has insinuated that uh, a lot of those properties that are bought and sold by members of this board that, that you mentioned in the item here today, uh, again, you're sort of competing with citizens that might want to invest in properties and according to Mr. that Store, i got to stop you that's a, we're talking about a bid here excuse me we're talking about a bid we're not going to get out of out of control here you ask which i said we're, we're not going to get out of control on, here and not? i mean that now the land bank was part of the bid if that's what you want to talk about that's fine if you don't want to talk about that, then you're out of order. Bank is also part of the development in Omaha. We're not talking about the development in Omaha. North We're talking about Street, a... is that not part of the development? If you'll excuse me one second. The first lady that came up went, jumped right to... We're, we're not going to do this. We're not number 48. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this today. We're not going to do this. Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? No. Because uh, we're not going to do this today. It, it, we're, we're not going to do this today. We're not going to do this today. We're not going to do this today, Mr. Story. You got to leave. Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. 
Is there a motion? Okay. Oh, we're taking 30. We have to take 30, 40, 30. 46. 30 and 46 off of consent. And 49. And 49. We're taking 30 off consent, too. <laughs> so it would be 29. Everything but. 30 46 and 49. Second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 30, a resolution to authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to Anderson Ford in the total amount of $26,666 for the purchase of one one-ton cargo van with options to be utilized by the Facilities Management Division. There is a request for approval be contingent upon submission of a current CC1 form in 30 days. Public hearing, this is public hearing, right? Yeah. Public hearing agenda item number 30 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Motion to approve contingent upon obtaining CC1 form in 30 CC1 form and filing it within 30 days. Okay. Moved and seconded to approve with contingencies. Item 30, there are no further lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item is approved 7 to 0. Item 46, a resolution to approve the payment to CHI Health in the amount of $36,878.40 for the purchase of 936 Cyproflex, 500 milligram <laughs> tabs to be used by the Omaha Metropolitan Healthcare Coalition and its partner agencies. Public, public hearing agenda item number 46 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Second, roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Uh, Mr. President. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Council member Festerson passes due to a potential conflict of interest. Item 46 is approved 6 to 0. Second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. And maybe if I. You know, just for those that are following that item, too, uh, the, the, uh, maybe some rationale as to why we're doing that. Um, it was the recommendation of the law department this morning to uh, to do so uh, as they continue to negotiate what might be a uh, pilot project agreement with scooter companies uh, interested in coming to Omaha that is not quite ready and did not have the attachment uh, for today's public agenda. So I think it is the right thing to withdraw that for now. And should they come back with those details, it'll get reestablished on the agenda with its own public hearing. Thanks. Mr. President. Yes, I'm sorry. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 50, an ordinance awarding a contract to FCC Environmental for OPW 53407 for the Omaha Solid Waste Collections Contract for the years 2021 to 2030 with an estimated annual cost of $22,691,046. A is communications in opposition. B is a request from Mayor Stothert to postpone this item to a new date of June 4th, 2019 meeting. We had the public hearing last week. Uh, Mr. Pauls. I just have a, a couple comments to make. First of all, I want to thank the mayor for extending the deadline. I think that will be changed. I do have a couple questions I want to make sure that are answered before we move on. And I'd like to, Jim, can I? Jim Tyler, City of Omaha Public Works. It's my understanding we are going to take a, a look at West Central. Y yes, um, we're um, finalizing a scope uh, with HDR Engineering at this time. Um, that scope's going to involve um, a, a detailed review of the information that was presented to us. It's going to include detailed interviews of the staff from uh, West Central Sanitation. Um, it's going to allow for time for a report to be prepared and then time for review of the uh, Mayor and City Council of that report. Okay. 
I'm going to go through what I call as my education background, the W questions. You've already given some of that answer, but I want, answers, but I want to make sure that uh, the people who are watching, especially some of my uh, friends in the business world who are questioning some of our decisions. Now, who's going to be making uh, uh, this uh, invest? I'm using the word investigation. So what the company? H HDR Engineering. Okay, HDR. And uh, how, uh, how or why were they chosen? That's the why question. We called the company that we knew had a solid waste management division. They recommended someone within their company. Uh, we've been talking back and forth. And before agreeing to do the work, um, they um, wanted to make sure that they had no conflicts of interest. They have not done business with FCC or with WCS. So we wanted to find a total impartial company um, that could do the work in the time frame that we needed it and provide the information to you um, that may not be apparent. Okay. Uh, and and uh, to me, a key statement you made was impartial. Now, being a person who does a lot of research in my past, uh, bias is a very important thing in any time we're making a study. And uh, HDR does an awful lot of work for the city of Omaha. Yes. A lot. Yes. And it's part of that, I think, and I'm not speaking for HDR, but I, I think they would um, be wanting to do this in the best interest of the city without any bias. Okay. But I think there's, there's, I can go either way on that question. Okay. Uh, now, what are they going to investigate? You, get, you did give us, but I, I really want that to be clear. Sure, and, and, and I'm, I'm speaking from a draft um, that's still a work in yes, progress and we're finalizing this today. You know, the, the first task is we're providing them all the existing documentation that we were provided as a working group to conduct our, our bid review, right. um, in, including the letter that they sent to you, right. um, their, their full bid specs. Um, af after they look at that, um, they're going to look at the um, the bid in detail, including interviews. And we're we're going to we're t tomorrow we're going to be on the phone with S uh, WCS tomorrow morning, okay. just to get the process started so we can get a schedule to all of this because this is evolving pretty rapidly. But you know that that interview we're going to try to get down into the weeds beyond the numbers that, frankly, we didn't see how they worked out. And we want to get in behind those numbers so we get a deeper understanding of what of what they're saying that we might not be seeing. Um, that, that's a second task. Um, a, a next task after that is they're going to prepare a technical mem memorandum, first a draft um, depicting findings um, and uh, getting into the details of their resource allocation plan, um, how much work it's going to take them to do the work. Um, it's that um, technical memorandum, it's going to include a background summary of documents received, um, findings on the resource allocation plan, what are the inputs, the assumptions versus the industry standard, and what that means, um, looking into their plan of operations and their uh, resource costs. Um, we plan probably multiple tele teleconferences to make sure we're understanding the information um, we plan on allotting for time for them to um, schedule briefings with you um, so that um, if you have any questions on the information. So we, we can um, have a report prepared probably during the week of May 14th so that we can come back that following week, schedule briefings so we've had time to look at the report. Um, we'll have those briefings the following week. And then two weeks after that, because we don't have a council meeting on the uh, after Memorial Day, that um, it'd be anticipated that we would um, ask to go ahead with the vote. Okay. So by just hearing what you're telling me, you're saying you're going to share that information with us uh, that you want you, all the analysts, uh, everyone's, everything's been analyzed that will be shared with us? The intent is to share, share the information allow time for you to see that information before we pr provide briefings where you would be able to answer or ask questions. And then it'd be two weeks after that where would be the vote. Okay. Because uh, to me, this is something that 
I don't know about anybody else on the council, but once I see some of the questions that are asked, that would be a template for me to utilize in the future. Because some of the questions that you're going to be uh, asking the company uh, would be something that if I have a qu an issue with a down the line another contract, I could at least I'll have that template to follow. Uh, who from HDR is? I know Mike uh, was. Uh, are you going to let us know who that person is? Sure. There's. Um, uh, I've been working with a gentleman named Doug De Caesar, yeah. and um, he's he heads their. Um, uh, it's a waste management division, and he's out of Denver. And the person that I'm going to be getting on the phone with tomorrow that um, I think is going to be working a little bit more on the interviews, um, I, I can't remember his name. No, I, just I, I understand. Out today, but he's, yeah. he's um, something that uh, we're going to get on the phone with tomorrow. And uh, just want to have an initial phone call right. with uh, Waste Central Sanitation, three individuals from their company. Right to just start to say, hey, here's what we think the process is going to involve. Here's the questions we're thinking about asking. What questions did we miss? What do you want us, what else do you want us to ask? So we, we want it to be really, um, you know, is if there is something missed, it was either missed on their end or it was missed on our end. And we want to make sure that comes yeah. out. And here's just a couple things that initially uh, struck me. There were two banks that they mentioned. One bank was works basically an awful lot in this particular area. Uh, would those banks, would they support a, uh, a company if they thought they were going to fail? I mean, that's just one, I'm just curious. Uh, well, well, one, we don't know, and those letters were written prior to okay. the company seeing how the bids came out. Okay. Now, here's another thing, too. Uh, apparently, they thought that I was one of the guys working because, well, didn't you, le didn't you read our uh, reference letters? Because I asked, especially when I talked to the... Uh, the city administrator, and he gave me his dialogue, and I was sort of uh, surprised by all the positive comments he made. And he said, "Well, didn't you read? Uh, haven't you read the other references? I'm sure they're as good." So, but that's what you will be checking up on those. Sure, and and we did read all of that information. Okay. Well, he thought I was doing. I said, yeah, "No, right. I, I, that's." A, um, yeah. But yeah, all that information that we've already looked at okay. that will be provided to us. And, and just one final thing, because I know that you said the, uh, this will be a, t a week after uh, Memorial Day is when this is going to be brought to us to be voted on. Is that what I heard you say? I, I think that's what's okay, going to come okay. before you, yes. <clears throat> you know, as you do this, what I, I, ju I just got to thinking here, I just went through a list. I, okay. Kiewit, Hawkins, Gallup. TD Ameritrade, Tanaska, Mutual of Omaha, HDR, at one time started as a small company. Now, I know we can't take a gamble and have the city be um, put on the spot because, as, uh, as Mr. Jared said, we can't have garbage laying everywhere. But I think we ought to also think about these, and I'm sure FCC, uh, or uh, they were at one time were a relatively small company. But I, I looked at the number of just major companies in the city of Omaha I know did not start in, in those big, HDR did not start at Exarvin. I'm sure before, many years before that, they were a relatively small, may have been a, like Microsoft uh, in a college classroom, you know, Facebook. I mean, so I, I'm just, I'm just, I want to be very careful that we do not get some company who does, there's something about them that attracted me. But I, I understand you're going to investigate and you're going to say, hey, Rich, you know, good idea, just doesn't fit Omaha. And I, I, and I appreciate that. And what you told me today gives me a lot of confidence that we are seriously trying to take a look at that. And I have to do, commend the mayor for going that what I call that additional step. I, I do appreciate because I know I'm uh, not making your life easier. I know I'm not. But I'm telling you, this is a potential 20-year plan. Uh, that's going to affect a lot of people. So again, I need to thank you again for, for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Melton. Oh, thank you. And and I will make a move to lay this over till to June fourth. And I do want to, you know, I think going through this process and laying it over and having this much discussion is really good. And I, I think the fact that all seven of us here on council agreed. I mean, immediately, yes. Let Let's take as much time as we think we need. 
let's take the time to evaluate the evaluation that we're going to get back because we want to make the right decision. And I think we all have some different ideas of what we'd like to see. But I, I, I just want to make a comment because I kept seeing it repeatedly on multiple pages on Facebook and everything else about, well, you know, this is awful and the mayor's contract is horrible. And I just kept wanting to go, no one's passed a contract. A contract has not been passed. In fact, we're all still discussing it. All seven council members are discussing it with the mayor. I think she's been on the phone with all seven of us within the last week, not only discussing which which bid we accept, but how we're going to evaluate the two. So what we have in front of us right now is kind of the starting point. It's this is what the mayor started with. This is what she thinks from what she got was the best alternative in front of her. But I think there's also other kind of things that we could think about on how we could service the community and some of the, the extraordinary needs of some people who have, you know, like we heard 70 bags of of uh, compost that, that they need taken down. And so what I appreciate is the fact that the mayor has been continuing to listen um, to the people of the city of Omaha and listen to council members. And really, this is something that all eight of us are, are um, going to live with and people are going to remind us about um, for a very long time. So I do want to get it right. And I think that continuing this conversation and doing further evaluations is, is in the best interest of of everyone. So I want to thank everybody here for continuing those efforts. Thank you. Mr. Harding. I'm sorry. You said it's it's moved and seconded the layover. Yeah, the layover to June 4th. It's, it's been moved and seconded. Mr. Harding. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I too will, uh, 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 I guess, thank the mayor for, uh, for listening and, and taking another uh, look at um, maybe one of the potential bidders that might have the capacity to do this. One of the areas, um, Jim, that I wanted to ask about, um, I, I understand the, what you're going through in developing the scope um, to work with this further evaluation. I, I want to make sure that um, part of that is kind of, if you will, a financial review. Not only the capacity physically and their, um, their um, operation statement. Uh, I, I, I think it's important, and I don't know if that's something that um, is within HDR's capacity or if that's to be done with someone else. But, uh, and I think Council Member Paul's uh, touched a little bit on that with the, uh, both the um, commitment letters for the financing, I believe it was up to 50 million um, from two financial institutions. I think Comerica was one of them. One was a more local uh, in Minnesota. And also the uh, the performance bond commitments, um, those are those are areas that I think should also be addressed. And again, I'm not sure that falls within what might be a scope for HDR, but I would I would suggest maybe that that be considered as you as you go through this process. Sure, and and we we are looking at and and maybe this isn't exactly what you're talking about, but I think it's we're we're trying to hit the right points is is what were their assumptions on upfront capital required to make the investment into the community? Mm -hmm. You know, did, did, are those assumptions appropriate, you know, based on the, the cost of land, how much a new building is going to cost, um, what are the utility costs, you know, or did they make those right assumptions? So we're going to take a, a closer look into that based on what's behind the numbers. So I'm not sure exactly if that's what you're looking for. Well, I think that's, yeah, that's in part, but it, um, because obviously with those initial costs to, um, to begin servicing Omaha, those, those investments and that capital investment's going to be made. So I, I guess maybe my point too was knowing that component as well as the actual letters of, of commitment um, and the and the commitment from a, a, a performance bonding agency, making sure that 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 financial analysis is part of what this what the scope of either HDR or someone else to do that because I think that's an important component to make sure that you know the last thing we, I think we want to do is to get into business with someone who's not capitalized sufficiently in order to perform the contract. Sure. So so we. We have those letters. 
and we can, um, we can with HDR take a deeper dive into contacting directly those um, people that made those letters. If this isn't something in HDR's wheelhouse, you know, we can talk about how we, we need to accomplish that. But at a minimum, we could talk to the companies that provided the letters to, to understand. To understand how they got of, to that yeah, point. correct. And make sure that it's sufficient. But, but again, I, I think following up on, on some of those commitments sure. was all, would also be important. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Vice President. Yes, you know, frequently we're reminded that we shouldn't, and I agree, um, as expressed by others recently, we usually don't vote on things that we haven't seen. And while the mayor did call and ask if I had any problem with a layover, and I don't, I would feel more comfortable seeing what it is you're asking HDR to do. And the contract details, so, so their as, agreement. As soon as I have this finalized, we'll make sure that a copy gets to anyone that, that needs a copy of this. So we're Before. still working out the final details. So you know, part of this layover is this tacit agreement to this contract that you're being asked to comment on on the fly here today under somewhat a little bit duress of not having the deal done. And so we're taking this or being asked to take this leap of faith to agree to something we haven't seen that's going to get the result we all hope happens. And then after today, because it's, it could be under $20,000 thresh, threshold and may not actually come back. And then we could take a look at this thing and, oh, I wish it would have done this or would have done that, or, boy, I'm disappointed it didn't do this or didn't do that. I'd much rather take a week with the understanding we're all okay with this layover. It's just to see what it is that's going to be done. But there's another reason, and that's because unsuccessful bidders usually file appeals. Those usually come up, and that wasn't done in this case. So I want the legal department to give me an opinion on the propriety of this whole endeavor, because it seems to me while there, there might be another option, I would sure like the benefit of the city's expertise on the options and legal recourse and the timing available to the unsuccessful bidders um, before I do that. And again, I'm okay with this broader step back or tap the brakes, I think someone said, and look at all these things. Um, and I think if, if, the, if you were okay with the one week before the whatever weeks it is to get to June, um, that's what I would prefer to do. Uh, on the second hand, I would like to point out, thank you, Mr. Tyler, that's all I have for you. I would like to acknowledge and, and recognize the FCC team who's here today, again, demonstrating their commitment to contract with the city. And through this process, their patience, I want to thank you for that and uh, for being here today. Thank you. Mr. Pauls. <laughs> okay. Now, Mr. Jarrett, as usual, you've confused me a little bit. Uh, and I say that with a smile. Uh, you're saying we should see this before we say yay, what the city's going to do? And I, I know uh, he's under pressure to get things done, but are we, you're telling yeah, me? I, I, I don't, I haven't heard anyone say they have a problem with a layover to take this. No, this I, no, no. But I, I do think we should know what it is, that's gonna, what this thing's going to be. And you've, you, because of the questions yeah. you asked, you got the who, what, when, why, where, and how. And Mr. Harding's questions on top of it got me thinking, wait a minute, we don't even really know what exactly they're going to do here. And then it got me thinking, I stepped back to Mr. Kratz to say, is this even procedurally something that could be done even if we do this endeavor? So it gave me the, the opportunity to think, well, maybe we ought to get the benefit in this one week while we're waiting for this final contract to see if it's something that can even be done. 
and again, I have no problem with waiting until the first week in June to do this. Mr. Vice President, do you mind if I chip in? Sure. Uh, my, my thought would be what maybe what you're asking for so that we're not continuing that we can continue the vote on this, the big vote to the June 4th, but maybe what we ask um, Jim to do is put this on our consent agenda for this particular contract for next week. That it would then be a consent agenda item that could be discussed. Maybe, maybe that would be a better a, a better suggestion. Yeah, I don't have. Because I don't any, know how you attach that to. to I don't this have any heartburn item. over that. I, I do. I do, do want, and hopefully, Mr. Kratz is a week enough for you right. to say whether your department can give a, a legal opinion to counts to the city council. Yeah, I don't want this to go. Well. Paul Kratz, city attorney. Yes, we can do it within a week. Thank you. Okay. No, I think they don't have to. I'm just no, saying that might be a good Can you get something on the agenda in a week? I, th I think so. Okay. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to uh, lay over to June 4th. What do we do procedurally, Madam Clerk, in terms of this contract, though? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't we're do anything. There's nothing, there's nothing to do until right. they present it. The and then it goes on Correct. the agenda. Okay. Correct. Right. Yeah. And just so for the record, we're only voting on a layover. Yeah. We're not vote, we're not commenting on this contract, or or whether the layover would allow consideration until we know from Mr. Kratz of an alternate bidder, unsuccessful bidder. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Moved and seconded to layover till June fourth. There's no further lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item the, or the layover is approved seven to zero. Item 51, an ordinance to amend Omaha Municipal Code. Jim, let me, do, before we do that, Jim, just to make sure, we, you, you're uh, going to put together um, a contract that, that will be on our agenda next week for, for uh, in our consent. I don't think he can, he can submit that for the mayor. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I can commit to anything that I have on paper that HDR is going to sign tomorrow. I'll provide that to everyone for so you can see what's on that piece of paper and it's going to be very very close to the items that I was reading to you today we're just adding some language to make sure that it's clear that they're going to provide time to come back to you for briefings in front of you so you can ask questions that isn't in the piece of paper in front of me okay okay it's moving second to roll call I'm sorry <laughs> we already voted over. Next, next to we voted already? So fast. God! <laughs> I'm trying to get you out. Okay. <laughs> next time. Okay. Item 51, an ordinance to amend Omaha Municipal, Municipal Code, Chapter Stop 18, it. by creating Stop a new it. article to prohibit the use and distribution of single-use plastic carryout bags at certain retail business establishments. A is an amendment of the whole requested by the Law Department. B is an amendment of the whole requested by Councilmember Festerson. C is communications in support. D is communications in opposition. Public hearing was held last week. Uh, Mr. Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, I supported the previous layover, obviously, and I think that's the idea with this item two, number 51. And I think that makes sense for a few reasons. One of which is, for me, it's one and the same conversation to be talking about uh, waste reduction and litter reduction in the context of how we're going to handle our next 10 to 20 year uh, waste hauling contract, which is number 50. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have two amendments to the whole to be considered and have shown additional flexibility in terms of how a plastic bag ban can be accomplished, um, both in terms of definitions and in terms of time, time frame for those that are interested in a phase and approach. So with that in mind, I think it does make sense to also delay this item um, for further discussion. And I think what I would motion is a delay until May 21st. We don't meet on the 28th. And it sounds like we'll have information back at about that same time from this waste hauling study that could produce something on that on June 4th. So if this takes a little bit longer, we can do that to June 4th as well. But I don't think it will take that long. So my, my thought is to motion to lay over to May 21st initially. Second. Move. I've got a you got a line. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I didn't turn off any of them. I must let Mr. Festerson finish. All right. Uh, Mr. Harding. Actually, I'll. I'll uh, I'll yield to Councilmember Melton, then if I need, I'll, I'll weigh in. 
I just have one. I just have Council Member Mel. Um, on that, the motion to lay over, because the public hearing was held last week, that now we have, we're going to have, we already have an amendment of the whole on here. And then if there may be additional amendments. What I would request is that on May 21st, we hold a public hearing. Even if you decide to have the vote at the same time, I do think we should give anyone who is now affected by the ordinance that wasn't affected before the opportunity to be heard, if you'd be willing to do that. Procedurally, how, how would that work since this item's already had its public hearing and that was closed? You can reopen it. I would just add it to the motion to postpone. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm willing to do that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. That's all, that's all I yep. had to ask. Uh, Mr. Harding. You did decide to win. I did, well, because, you know what, so I'll, I'll prove chivalry is not dead, because that's exactly what I was going to bring up. <laughs> I had no idea you were going to oh. do that, but I, I wanted to make, uh, ask for it to be included in the motion that the public hearing be reopened uh, for, the, for the idea that there may be others that didn't get a chance to weigh in on the initial proposal. Okay. We agreed to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been moved and moved and seconded. To uh, lay over till January. I mean, till January. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, it's rough on me today. Uh, May 21st. May 21st. Uh, 2018. <laughs> Roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 52, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 41725 to acquire certain private property for the purpose of the exposed sewer channel crossings rehabilitation design located at the northwest corner of Blondo Street and Interstate 680. Public hearing agenda item number 52 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 53, an ordinance approving an amendment to the redevelopment agreement with 1234 South 10th LLC for the Rose on South Hill Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Plan to authorize additional TIF loan allocation of $652,506 for a new total of $2,152,506. Public hearing agenda item number 53 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, Bridget Hadley, uh, Swift City Planning, here to answer questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Good afternoon, uh, Tom McClay, 3814 Farnham Street. I'm here on behalf of the ownership. Uh, this was a, uh, a TIF uh, redevelopment plan that was approved uh, by you all. This is the agreement following on uh, any questions you might have. I'm here to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Uh, hello, Council. Mark Von Drosik, uh, 211 South 37th Street. Um, I'd like to speak a little bit about this project. I have a question about the TIF funding on this guy. Um, this was for a project that was originally approved. I think the original project was for about nine, just over nine million dollars, uh, and they got about fifteen, one thousand, one million five hundred thousand uh, dollars in TIF funding for the original project. And now they're coming back to us to ask for an amendment to the project. Um, the new project cost with total is fourteen million dollars. Uh, and yet they're only asking us for an additional $652,000 in uh, approved TIF funding. Um, so some please, please correct me if my logic is wrong on this, but it would seem that somewhere along the line that this developer came up with an extra four to five million dollars in capital to continue this project, and they didn't need TIF funding from us to begin with. Um, in my opinion, this would seem to be a developer who is again, running roughshod over the needs of working class people in this neighborhood in the pursuit of private development, uh, which can only be called gentrification. The picture I've put up in front of you today is from a house at 2969 Harris Street, just off of Park Avenue. Uh, the developer bought out the lease and the property at this location and then removed the stairs before the people were allowed to leave the house. Uh, by show of hands, if you would, can any of you tell me if you've seen this picture before? I didn't think so. Um, this picture was shared on social media. I estimated with a little bit of research this afternoon that over 5,000 people saw this photo on Facebook, at least, um, some of which I can only assume are your constituents. Um, I think it says a lot that stuff like this is happening in your neighborhoods uh, and your constituents 
don't have a relationship with you where they feel it, anything would be accomplished by speaking out against this type of behavior. When developers come back for extra TIF funding like this, when they tear porches off before the people can move out, and like at 33rd and Mason where they have complaints about the developer not interacting with the neighborhood uh, as they should, this is all gentrification and you are approving it every single week that it goes by here. I challenge you to each of you, could you please name for me one instance uh, in any district in this city where you believe gentrification is occurring? Um, because I believe that most of the people on this council are operating under a, a false idea that gentrification is not happening. And I hate to be a broken record, but it's happening every single day in this city and something has got to change. Uh, including at this project uh, on 10th and Brick Street. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Luis Jimenez, 518 North 40th Street. I'm not going to be a broken record as well. Um, it might not be gentrification. I'm not, I'm not sh too sure about that. But what's going on is that developers are redeveloping for the community that they want to have, not for the community that they do have. And that's a problem, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Next item. One public hearing will be held for items 54 to 56 for ordinances levying a special tax and assessment on real estate within the Benson Business Improvement District number 6875, group number 6875-1516 and 17. Public hearing agenda items numbers 54 through 56 are today proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? <laughs> Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. One public hearing will be held for items 57 and 58 for ordinances levying a special tax and assessment on real estate within the Blackstone Business Improvement District number 6877, group number 6877-16 and 17. Public hearing agenda items number 57 and 58 are today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. One public hearing will be held for items 59 to 61 for ordinances levying a special tax and assessment on real estate within the Dundee Business Improvement District number 6876, group number 6876-1516 and 17. Public hearing agenda items number 50, 59, 60, and 61 are today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 62, an ordinance levying a special tax and assessment on real estate within the Elkhorn Business Improvement District, number 6878, group number 6878-17. Public hearing on agenda item number 62 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 63, an ordinance to approve an agreement with the Women's Center for Advancement in the amount of $271,130 and to authorize funding for such agreement from the City of Omaha's fiscal year 2018 National Sexual Assault Kit Initiative Grant. Public hearing on agenda item number 63 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 64, an ordinance to approve the 10th Amendment to the Redevelopment Agreement with the Durham Museum, extending the Redevelopment Agreement an additional period of three years in an amount not to exceed $100,000. Public hearing on agenda item number 64 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 65, an ordinance to approve an interlocal agreement with the City of Valley to operate keynote satellite locations. Public hearing agenda item number 65 is today. Proponents, please. Hello, Nick Thielen, uh, Big Red Kino, uh, 11248 John Galt Boulevard, Omaha. Uh, I'm really just here to answer any questions you have today. We're setting up Valley to get onto Omaha's game. It should be good for everybody. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 66, a resolution to approve the 2018 Tax Increment Financing Annual Report for the City of Omaha. Public hearing agenda item number 66 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, Bridget Hadley, City Planning. Um, I did bring the hard copies, 10 of them. I have to do it with you. Do you have an actual one for Mark? You're paperless. I'm not going to need to get 
So the report is actually online now, uh, this report that I'm going to speak on real briefly. Um, a special thanks to various city staff who helped uh, me pull this together, from planning, law department, finance, the mayor's office, um, in addition to the Douglas County staff, GIS, and the Douglas County Assessor's Office. Um, <clears throat> this is the first year to present uh, the report that includes state required items as well as the city council required items. So those are all combined and you'll see those referenced on page pages 8 through 10 of the report. Um, essentially uh, this year or in 2018, 24 applications were received. During that process of reviewing those applications, 18 of those projects were approved. Um, 39 million in TIF loans were approved when adjusted for amendments and accrued uh, interest. Um, and that represented 39 million for about 298 million in proposed investments in CRAs in Omaha. Um, if I just touch real briefly on pages 8 through 9, or excuse me, 8 through 10, th those are the seven items that the state uh, requires as well as combine some of the city council items. Um, three, the first three are historic uh, pieces of information. Uh, there were a total, have been a total of 405 uh, TIF projects financed by the City of Omaha. The first one was in 1982. Um, that represented about 5.9 million in proposed investments in the city. Um, we feel like the number that's more relevant is 232 active TIFs right now. Um, and then there's a comparison table on page 8 which looks at the amount of TIF that was initially projected for each of those projects compared to the assessed valuation as of January 1st of this year. And um, as you look at it, you'll see variances. We feel like what is most important is that um, a lot of the older projects are going to have uh, be more closely uh, associated with the value. So you would see that the report shows about 85 to 97 percent of those projects have reached the assessed valuation. Um, only the newer projects that were put on the books, so the last two rows, 2015 to, through 2017, those are the newer projects and those are not fully assessed. Those values are not on the books yet. So therefore, that valuation is going to be much lower than what was initially projected as a valuation. And the initial projected valuation is from, uh, provided to us by the TIF applicant. Um, so a total of uh, 18 projects were approved last year. Um, also, nine projects were paid off last year. Um, that is a number that we also like to make sure we uh, indicate and, and reference. Um, there are more specifics about each of those 18 projects that were approved on page 18, excuse me, page 15 of the report. And then the percentage of uh, blighted and substandard or blighted as the law asks for, which is the same as the CRA designation, the percentage um, of the city that is in that blighted area is, was 17.8% as of December 31st of 2018. Um, what we think really is more important, and I think a, council, a few council members have also said that it, we talk about the new projects that come on every year, but also to emphasize the ones that come off, that pay off rather, and that's the nine. And I think the most important point that I'll point out is of the nine that paid off in 2018, they are returning at least a million dollars in tax revenue back to the taxing jurisdiction. So uh, that will be per year as they're assessed. Exactly. So we feel like that's a good success story of our TIF projects. Um, the report does not cover spillover pro um, effects um, such as, you know, indirect job creation, business investments in the area. Um, however, if, as we drive around, you see the progress and, and uh, the destinations that have been created with the TIF projects. So with that, I would like to thank you for your time and uh, ask you to please accept this report as our annual submittal for 2018. Thank you. That's it. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. I just want I'm to sorry. give an extra thank you, Bridget. I, I just want to oh, give an a, for all the work that you put okay. into this. I know we've been asking for it, but this is exactly when, when we hear people talk about the TIF projects and everybody says it's costing us money. 
I mean, this just goes to show that the investment that's being made is paying off, and it doesn't it doesn't cost us any money. It just delays the risk the receipt of the money, and this is great that just in this year mm -hmm. we're going to see a million dollars every year moving right. forward. Right. Um, it's not a one time, and and I like your graph that shows what we would have received had we not had the TIF projects, which I believe on your graph on page twelve was one hundred and sixteen thousand. Probably right. I hate to get to that. I, I mean, if you do a two percent increase, yeah. right. which may or may not have happened on on blighted property. So I just want to. Thank you for the work that you put into this. It's a, a very valuable tool, and um, you're welcome. I'll be keeping it. So thank you. I'm sorry. We need to make a motion. Oh, and to I'll accept. move. I'll move to accept it since I've got my microphone on. Moved and seconded to accept the report. No further lights. Roll call. Harding, yes. Jerem, yes. Melton, yes. Paul, yes. Palermo, Festerson, yes. Mr. President, yes. Item 66 is approved. Seven to zero. Non-action items, items 67 through 100, do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on the agenda for consideration. Motion adjourned. So moved. Second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed. Seven to zero. Meeting is adjourned. It's 4:01. Thank <laughs> you.